They're literally going to do this for the next the stuff. 10 minutes. The magazine. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome to Archant Towers. New Pinker magazine is out um, a few days ago, I think. Michael Bailey here with David Freezer uh, to talk about, uh, it's been a busy week. Busy week and lots of Norwich City stuff to talk about. Well, it's not going to talk about politics. That'd be ridiculous. This is the place for a break from politics. Possibly. <sighs> Politics. Well, wow, politics. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to share the video on my politics. Facebook page. Uh, Tom's going to listen to me uh, say <laughs> things. Uh, Dave, go on, Dave, just sum up the week, uh, as in your feelings of the week. Good week? Bad week? Yeah, good week. I mean, I think um, it continues the theme of people being happy with the, the early progress that they're making in the off-season. Stuart Webber talked a good game, and he's living up to it already. Um, signing of Angus Gunn on a season-long loan obviously kicked off the, the signings for this week. Uh, which was the second one of the summer, and then yesterday we got the sort of more unexpected one, which kind of uh, got on a roll rather quickly with uh, <laughs> Mario Vrancic from Darmstadt. Yeah, they both happened quite quickly. I think they've been all over the place early in the day, and then the club have been able to confirm them later in the day. Um, obviously, we're trade's point. Head over to pinkin.com <laughs> for the latest Norwich City news. But um, I think we should probably start with Angus, just we'll wrap them in. Make sure you get your questions in, by the way, on the uh, Pink and Facebook page, and we'll We'll answer as many of those as, as we can. Angus, tw- I love this, 21-year-old goalkeeper, never played an adults game of football. I know that's not factually how it works, but he hasn't made a senior appearance yet. As far as I'm concerned, he's going to be Norwich's number one next season. So that's uh, that's interesting. It's quite an unusual situation, isn't it? Mm-hmm. I mean, there, there were certainly, although the majority of fans, I'd say, were excited about the signing, that it's obviously got his nostalgic side with with, Brian, with him being Brian Gunn's son it's a, it's a really good story it is but there were plenty of people also pointing out well you know hang on this guy hasn't actually played any senior club football yet um, is it fair to Declan Rudd you know he, he seemed like he was poised to be number one this year but now maybe not so so that it you know also threw up a few questions you know what does it do for the future of Declan Rudd and Michael McGovern um, well I'll tell you I'll stop you there because Jamie Mann has asked where does this leave Declan Rudd? I mean, convenient, perfect timing, Jamie. <laughs> Ten points for that. I mean, to me, Deck would have come back here thinking he's going to get game time. And let's be realistic: Angus Gunn is here to play games, otherwise Man City wouldn't have let him come in. So Declan isn't now going to get games. He will not. He's twenty six. That's the thing. I think we all, maybe lots of people, assume he's, you know, he's a good age for a goalkeeper, but he, he's not young. I would suggest. And I think if you look at the saleable assets that Norwich have had, Norwich have at the moment, he's probably one of them if someone comes in. Yeah, I mean, Preston and Charlton have both had him on loan before, both big fans, aren't they? Simon Grayson certainly spoke very highly of him after that was 18 months in the end of Preston, wasn't it? So I think if he was available, both those teams would be um, up for, for having him. Whether Charlton could afford him or, or not, I don't know. But yeah, I mean, Dex played you know nearly 200 senior games now, hasn't he? So if, if he's not going to play this year, then... I think the club, out of fairness to him, should let him go if there's a deal there, if he feels that's what he wants to do. And if he feels he wants to pursue his career elsewhere, I don't think any any City fans would hold it against him. I think everyone would wish him well. I think that's absolutely true. And I think it'd be a shame because I think Deck is desperate to play for his hometown yeah. club. It's just how it hasn't worked out for him. And, and he's not far off the standard, is he? He's, no. Well, we've never really seen him play in the Championship for Norwich. That's the yeah. reality. He's, he's been on loan twice in, in League One, I think, because his Preston loan was in League One, I think. When uh, was, yeah, yeah, both, both so, times. Yeah, and yeah. then when he's played for Norwich, it's mostly been in the Premier League. Yeah. And I think he probably came up a little bit short then. But, you know, It's kind of a sad story, story, isn't it? Because how long has Depp been at the club? It, it's like 16 years or something, yeah. isn't it? It's a shame. It is a shame. Uh, question from uh, Keith Shrek Shaw. Hello, Keith. Let us all know where you are, by the way. We like to know. It is sunny here, so we're not going to be too jealous. Uh, but, yeah, it's always good to know where you're commenting from. He says, uh, hello, uh, do we think Daniel Farker will sign a striker? Which is interesting because that's probably the one element I haven't heard a lot on, actually. Mm. We've obviously had the midfield de- deals done. I think Norwich have got their goalkeeper in now. I think we're getting to the point where I'm saying, starting to hear a few bits and bobs in terms of defenders. Striker-wise? Well, Marley Watkins is, a, is a, an attacker, isn't he? I think Marley could play through the middle if needs be, but it's not necessarily his uh, preferred position. He's more of a wide player or, or a 10, isn't he? Um, Stuart Webber did mention that they've got Jerome and Oliveira, but perhaps do they need another option? You know, uh, you know, he didn't say it as much, but you, you would presume that means a more of a pacey poacher type player. I mean, 
a name which has long been linked, but I'd imagine it'll be too expensive this summer is Britta Sombolonga. So, um, you know, if you could get a player of that type, that would that would be a great addition. Nicky Wells was the, uh, the one who did he did all right at Huddersfield, I think. Yeah, but I don't think Norwich yeah. be getting him. The pronunciation but, of his name, I, I oh, know, uh, it keeps changing. Uh, on the on the playoff final, it was Nicky, wasn't it? Nicky, rather, rather than Nicky. So it was like the Lewis Graben effect. <laughs> Graben, <laughs> Graben. <laughs> Uh, here's one from Alexander James Quelch. Uh, why are the club? Why, as a club, are we trying to do things on the cheap? Surely, as a club, we are not <laughs> potless. Now, if you bring that up, um, Alexander. I should uh, once again plug the latest edition of the Pink and Magazine uh, because there's a good bit in here. He says, "Have you read it, Dave?" Uh, I haven't read it yet, but I've heard it's been excellently written. Michael. That's that's awkward. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you. Um, I, I literally only got mine. An hour we, ago, yeah, so. we we only got ours uh, quite recently, but uh, here we go. It's um it's basically about the finances facing Norwich City, and uh, you may have actually seen. I kind of mentioned it in the uh, Talk Norwich City podcast I did with Jack and uh, Chris the other the other day as well. Effectively, Norwich have spent all their money on propping up their wage bill in the Championship, that was the, the Premier League, um, and ultimately, all they can do, even with the parachute payments they're guaranteed, is try and cut the wage bill as much as possible because. They, it's in excess of those of those uh, parachute payments, and come next season, or sorry, come the twenty eight, come twenty eighteen, if Norwich haven't gone up back to the Premier League, their revenue in terms of uh, TV rights and, and away from ticket revenue uh, would be just eight million quid, and their wage bill is set to be probably still in the high twenties even then. So if you had a Stephen Naismith still on the wage bill at that point, then that would become. Troublesome, wouldn't it? I think I think the wage bill will just get the, the squad will be decimated if Norwich don't do it next year. Depending on what work they do this this year, so that's kind of where I think this whole cheap option thing is is coming from. Uh, Tom uh, behind us keeps uh, pointing out some funny messages, so I'll, I'll have to see if I they're the ones I'm reading out. But uh, Oliver Savory is Mario a replacement for House and and or Dorans? Do we still need another central midfielder if they both leave? Sounds more like Dorans, doesn't it? I would believe it's Dorans. He's left-footed. He'll sit a bit deeper. Uh, so, yes, I would imagine it's Graham. I would expect both of them to leave. Yeah. Um, yesterday, the Express was saying that Rangers had bid <coughs> 750000 but Norwich are looking for more like £1.5 million. I mean, touching on the, the finances again, if you can bring in a very similar player who um, fits what the new head coach is looking to do and you can get a million plus for Graham Dorans and get rid of his wages, that seems to be the situation that Norwich are in at the moment. Yeah, I think it's an interesting one because Norwich are getting the players they want in first uh, and it's almost, uh, I guess they're, they're getting the players they, they want in and then they can be free to let the ones go when they get the right money for I mean, I don't think there's anything close with Graham Dorans at the moment but clearly it's being worked on fair play to Norwich for at least getting the players they want in first so that they know that they're in the door because they've got a big pre-season coming up it's a nice luxury isn't it because we've had um, last season uh, well the last two uh, summers sorry Alex Neal saying oh no you can't do any business early in the summer everyone's on holiday so Stuart Webber's proving that to be uh, not the case indeed and uh, we did have a little bit of house and speculation today yeah a, a fresh line um, he's been linked with Burnley who apparently have made an inquiry uh, check, I've checked that out with some of the local uh, press guys up there and they're looking to sort of get a, a real steer on it but they certainly need central midfielders at Burnley. Joey Barton's been suspended for 18 months for betting. Um, the guy who was on oh, loan no. here, who I've forgotten the name of, uh, Mar- Mar- Dean Marnie. Dean Marnie. yeah he's knee ligament so he's going to miss the start of the season and Stephen Defoe looks like he'll be leaving, only been there for a year, they paid more than £7 million for him and didn't really feel they got consistent play out of him so Johnny Housen would seem to be a good fit for them and if Norwich can get you know six million plus and sell into a Premier League club not a competitor then um, I think that would that would work out quite well yeah that's interesting stuff um, Jamie Mann says he's happy about getting 10 points I must have bestowed those on you Jamie so it's my <laughs> pleasure um, Clive Moore we need defenders now now well I mean yeah. strictly speaking they don't need them until July but I get the point uh, do you have anyone in mind uh, Nick Deal go on then who's this defender that's above Rackett on the list oh yeah I did tweet about that I, I'm not sure yet mm, we'll yeah. see but um, yes I mean the two that have come up today are uh, Julian uh, Borner uh, who plays in uh, it was for Bielefeld is that right? <laughs> yeah I'll go with I'm it I'm <laughs> sure that's how it's pronounced in the Bundesliga second tier yeah. uh, centre back link to, who's reportedly turned down Norwich um, that's not quite how I see it and uh, and uh, you know, may have 
caught wind of that a little bit. I, it's a difficult one because I think there's a quite a high uh, chance of uh, Norwich being linked with German players at the moment because it will help. Two um, and two, sort of. Yeah, a little bit. Agents are not stupid, and it is the football transfer season. People can do what they want to. Uh, and the Sean Raggett one, I mean, Norwich are clearly interested in that. It doesn't sound like it. The thing is, it doesn't sound like a lot of money to me, even if his uh, buyout clause is 350 grand. But, Looks like um, they've got a lot of competition, though, don't they? Even West Ham are apparently interested. So. <clears throat> Yeah, that's uh, that's going to be a difficult one. What else have we got to see? Here? Daniel Emery, who do you see as first choice striker next season? Uh, Nelson or Cam or a new signing? Right, Nelson for me. I mean, if you get a full season out of Nelson Oliveira, he doesn't decide to punch somebody at Rotherham uh, because they've grappled with him on the floor, <laughs> um, and he doesn't get. He any said injury. sorry, Dave. He <laughs> did say sorry <laughs> did repeatedly. Say sorry. Yeah, that, that that defeat will not leave me anytime soon. Um, <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I think Nelson's a very good player. If you can get a full season out of him with Cam to come off the bench as the impact striker, then I think you're in a fairly good position. Um, Keith Shrekshaw is back in touch. Likes the look of Rancic. Uh, Great Yarmouth, he's in, Keith. I hope it's nice and sunny and great. What a place to be (laughs) if it's sunny in the summer. Great Yarmouth, eh? Um, Yeah, we should get on to Mario Vrancic because... Uh, again, we're in the classic territory at the moment of these players coming in who, I'll admit, I didn't really know who Mario Francic was two, no, two, two days ago. <laughs> um, so you, you go by what people are judging, but there certainly seems like a good noise about him. Again, that's nothing to be said definite in terms of uh, whether a player will turn out or not. But I, I would say it sounds promising and £650,000, not that much money. Yeah, I think it seems to, to fit the bill. Um, he <clears> takes <throat> he took set pieces for Darmstadt. He was one of their better players. He's a technical player, but described as somebody... Um, I had a quick chat via email with one of the local uh, reporters who covers Darmstadt, and he said that he can get forward and get back. So, you know, he would seem to fit the, the mould that Norwich are looking for at the moment. Just played in the Bundesliga for three successive seasons, so I know he's been relegated in two of those years, but where Norwich are at the moment, they're a championship mid-table club, you can't avoid that. <laughs> no. You're signing a, a German top tiers uh, clubs, one of their best players, so that seems to be a sensible move. It does. And he, he seems very pleased indeed. to be here. He well. does seem very pleased to be here, and um, he works hard. I think I had a good chat with Dan O'Hagan, he said the fans will love him because of the effort and energy he puts in, and again, we're starting to see a recurring theme maybe about these players him and Marley Watkins, the one thing you hear is how hard they work, how much ground they cover. And all the Norwich fans who sat there watching Huddersfield Town last year would have praised Huddersfield Town for how much they worked. And this man, Daniel Farker, the new boss, um, well, was head, head effusive. Coach. Head, co- head coach, <laughs> yeah, was effusive in his praise, wasn't he, about his personality yeah. as well. So, you know, that's a good thing that we're always talking about with transfers. Yeah, with some lovely quotes about um, really channeling all your emotions into Norwich City which uh, I think gets people excited definitely uh, what have we got next here um, Aston Beals need to sign Kolka from QPR that would be a great signing didn't he go somewhere strange on loan last year like Greece or Turkey I'm sure, I don't know if he's still you know yeah. as hungry as he was no, uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure I'd be happy with that to be honest he hasn't he's still living on past glories for me he's never really done it uh, Connor J. Saffer what style of defender do you think Norwich will sway towards a defensively solid centre half heading tackling uh, or a more ball playing centre back no I mean I do think there'll be a bit of possession and building from the back kind of funnels into Tim Closer this yeah, because definitely. if they are going to do the latter they'd probably want to keep hold of Tim Closer and I found it interesting that Mario Vrancic actually made the point of saying it's good that Tim Closer is here because it wouldn't be worth him really saying that if Tim was about to be, about to be sold off or not be here next season, I guess. Absolutely. I mean, I, I think everyone would like to see, you know, Sean Raggett would seem to fit that, bit, uh, that, that role. He's six foot five, big guy. He's going to make sure that he's dominant in the air. But if Norwich is going to be a possession-based team, then you've got to have defenders who are also good with their feet. So we'll see. Tim's in the Faroe Islands today, isn't he? He could be playing for Switzerland tonight in World Cup qualifying. So is that right? That's one to watch out for. Ooh, well, I hope it's sunny there as well. <laughs> uh, Susie S. Susie Swur. Swur? Oh, yeah. Swur. Are you after Sean Raggett? Well, he is on the list, as far as we know. Uh, uh, Keith Shrek Shaw, uh, Fox in the Box, maybe Adam, Adam Lafondre. I think he's extended his contract at yeah, Bolton. Yeah. He must be about. 34 now but that sort of player someone with a bit of place who can get in behind would be lovely well you've got Carlton Morris in the mix as well haven't yeah. you he obviously is coming back on from his loan at Rotherham he's not that type of player he's not a poacher is he he's more of a centre forward almost in the Grant Holt type mould there, there was talk a couple of years ago that he, he might be that successor for Grant that, that's obviously not happened yet but um, yeah he's not going to be that poacher so they're going to have to find
sign someone like that, I would have thought. Uh, where is Darren Eady? He is very informative. Exclamation mark. Kiss. That's oh, that's from Darren Eady. Hey, Darren. <laughs> Lunchtime. Gonna, gonna say he must be at home. Get now. to the beach, Darren. Get to the <laughs> beach. We would be at the beach. Uh, who else have we got here? There's another one from Keith. Prolific questioning, Keith. I like it. Uh, Darren saw you play when you first started at Norwich. Your runs. Were, oh, oh, he's talking to Darren. He's praising Darren. classic. It's a lovely. It's a lovely one of our Facebook Q and A's hijacked by Edie. Who <laughs> thought it? Good old Darren. He can hijack anything as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> he certainly can. Um, Terj Uzdal. I'm hoping I pronounced that right. Uh, Terj. Uh, Alex Tetty staying staying in Norwich. I mean, I, I imagine he lives in Norwich. Is he staying at Norwich? Well, he's got a year left on his contract, doesn't he? So he does. I would have thought, given that he <clears throat> retired from international duty last year, that they are planning to keep hold of him. And at the, the, the position they're at at the moment, I would be keeping Alex as, you know, maybe not a starter, but a good squad player. Because as much as you want to play possession football and passing football, you are going to go away to places like Burton and Sheffield United in January, February, when the pitches aren't great. And Alex Tete might come into his own. He will. And Louis Thompson is the one that I kind of keep repeating. I, I hope... He comes yeah. back really recovered Fingers and can really get involved. We've got a five minutes left warning from Tom Vince. Five minutes, get your questions in, we'll rattle through them. Uh, <clears throat> Keith, early bird catches the worm, boys, transfer wise. I mean, yes, I, I have to, they have to be praised for the fact that they are getting business done. They've got three signings in, and we're not even midway through June. But it's kind of imperative, isn't it? The amount of work they want to do ahead of pre season, they need to get as many bodies in as possible, and they probably still need you know, a couple more defenders and maybe a striker in, and then they can work with that rest bearing in mind they are trying to streamline the squad <laughs> they're actually trying to slim it down well left back I suppose is the next but as, as much as we do want to see centre backs left back is a priority isn't it we know that Mitchell Dykes won't be coming um, they said earlier this week that you know talks to bring him in permanently have broken down uh, because it was too expensive or sorry they didn't say that on the record but we understand <laughs> that it was uh, because of the finances involved in that deal so um, yeah <laughs> to be fair Stuart Webber has lived up to all of his words so far hasn't he so you know he's got a lot of credit in the bank um, I wonder what his secret is I mean he's a good talker isn't he and he obviously uh, does his research but he's um, yeah he's living up to his billing helps when there's no football I'm not yeah. saying anything, I'm just saying we're not playing any football yet, are we? So we'll be exciting when the, Lose the football the first goes 10 well. And and the the days, <laughs> so negative. Um, uh, yeah, so Nick Deal just bringing up about the Burnley inquiry. Well, we haven't had that stood up yet, so we'll see. But uh, no doubt Burnley would like Johnny Howson either way. Um, Alexander James Quelch, uh, how do you ch chaps rate our chances of promotion next season? Vital, we get promoted again. Well, as we said, with the finances, either it's going to be 8 million quid in the bank or 100 million quid in the bank. So that's, <laughs> that's one extreme to the other. In that sense, it is vital if you want players like Alex Pritchard still at at the club but um, yeah fingers crossed I guess we're, 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 not gonna, we're probably going to have to do it like Huddersfield did it <laughs> yeah I, I think it's it's too early to, to call really um, Middlesbrough are coming down looks like they're going to appoint Gary Monk that would be a good appointment Hull have just appointed Leonard Slutsky I think is how you pronounce yeah. it the former Russia boss which is an interesting appointment whether it will work out in the championship I don't know and Sunderland still haven't replaced David Moyes yet so what they do is obviously going to have a knock on impact on Norwich um, you know it's not that long until Norwich are back in pre-season we found out this week that they're going to be going to Ireland for to start pre-season with a with a five day training camp and a a uh, friendly against Cove Rangers. Is That's it right, yeah. Cove? Yeah. Well done. So um, Ram Ramblers, aren't they? Ramblers. Cove Ramblers. Ramblers. Yeah. So it's not that long until they'll be back on the grass. Two minutes left, we say. Yes, I, I think the training camp in Ireland is behind closed doors, but friendly will be yeah. uh, open to the public, as far as we know. Uh, Stuart Warburton, gun to start at number one. I would imagine he will have the number one shirt next season. Yes. Uh, squad list will be interesting when we get to that point. Will uh, he headbutt the crossbar, though? Uh, As you've already floated in. Yeah. I, I, It'll be a nice moment, but in a way... He's I, his own man. Yeah, the more I think about it, I almost don't want him to do no. it now, but people would be disappointed, I suppose. Hugh Osborne, uh, we are running out of time, but Hugh Osborne, keep getting questions in. Uh, thoughts on Viltshut? Will he leave? How much will we get from him? Mm. From Marseille. I've heard it's lovely in Marseille from someone I know. He'd do well to get the move to Marseille, wouldn't no, he? No, I don't think he means. Oh right, I don't think he means moving to Marseille. But he would do well. Yannick to get would there. jump for that. Yeah, <laughs> I think they'd take what they can get for him if it came in. It's one of those signings that I think it suited at the time, possibly because they were short of two left-sided players. But ultimately, now it just doesn't doesn't fit, which is a shame. He might be good after a decent pre-season. We don't know. Well, yeah, that, from everything we hear, we've heard, Stuart Webber thinks he's surplus to requirements. So I suppose if you can get. 
at least recoup half of what you paid. We don't know what it was, but... I think it was around five. Yeah, it was reported as seven at the time, but the club have sort of suggested maybe it wasn't quite that much. Yes. Uh, Clive Moore, Aidan Flint would be a good signing. Big and scores oh. the odd goal. Are you aware of Aidan Flint? Flint? Oh, he's Bristol now City. Bristol City centre back, yes, isn't he? Yeah, yes. He's very popular there, isn't he? So. And uh, that Norwich were looking at um, Joe Bryan, I think, the uh, left back as well. But I don't know if that things have changed <laughs> since I heard that, so we'd have to see. Uh, Jamie Burgum, hi from Adelaide. Nice. What time Beautiful. is it in Adelaide Beautiful. then? Uh, so um, two o'clock. So is it early hours? Has Gun? Yeah, it's going to be, isn't it? Has, has Gun got it? Oh no, late, late, late in the day. It'd be evening, wouldn't it? Okay. Uh, has Gun got enough experience to be number one keeper? Arguably not yet. But there we go. Final questions says Tom. Uh, does anyone know what formation Farker will play? That's from Aston Beals. Mm. Do I don't I don't know yet. Is the honest. I've seen it. I've seen four one four one mentioned. I'd like to think it might be a four three three kind of setup. That does filter into who they might want to sign uh, as a striker. At, well, in any position, really, in terms of... I don't know is the answer in terms of... And even what he may have lined up at Borussia might not necessarily be the same as he wants to line up here. Well, I, I had heard that he likes to use two number 10 roles, attacking midfielders, so that would tie in with the 4-1-4-1. Four, one, four, one. Um, but one thing I would add to that is that I would like to see some uh, coach that doesn't just have one set formation because that, that was a frustration with Alex Neal, wasn't it? That he assisted with that 4-2-3-1 even when it didn't seem to be suiting the, the opponent. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Brian Cooper feels sorry for Declan if Gunny becomes number one. Yeah, I would probably get feeling sorry for him then. Um, uh, Tony Bis, 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 oh, Bisfam? Sorry, sorry, Tony, <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce that. Aston, uh, telling Aston and us he plays 4 1 4 1, as you just said, Dave. Mm-hmm. Uh, where's Pritchard going to play? And Madison. I think Madison might be at another club on loan, <laughs> but mm. that's just a hunch. That's unfortunate. Don't, don't quote me on that just yet. Uh, Chris Dayton, I offer or Torn Zeebe? Presume that's how you pronounce it. Any truth? I saw you mention that to me earlier, Chris, on Twitter. I don't know. Not heard anything about those two so far. Probably not them, but you never know. You never know. And uh, Jamie Bergham tells us it's 10:30 p.m. in the evening in Adelaide. There you go. Lucky boy. Uh, Tom is frantically doing that, so <laughs> I think we need to wrap up. Uh, I think we've covered everything. It's been an e- interesting week. We might not be entirely done. There's I think a couple of um, internationals to watch for this weekend as well, isn't there? Yeah. What are they? Uh, <laughs> Scotland v uh, England tomorrow yeah. night. Naismith and Martin are in the in the squad for that. Yeah. Marley Watkins back in the Wales squad. They're in Serbia on yeah. Sunday. Uh, Jamal Lewis made his Northern Ireland under 21 debut yesterday uh, I think there's a few other there's a roundup on Pink and Docker <laughs> beautiful work uh, we'll see if anything else comes out today and over the weekend if it does keep an eye on Pink and Dotcom maybe one or two bits of, of stuff away from player stuff you never know uh, but yeah we'll do this more frequently uh, me and Dave are in again next week so uh, we'll see you then but uh, thanks so much for all your questions and your time uh, enjoy the sunshine I hope it's sunny where you are where's he